While painting the shoulder girdle or thorax, one of the easiest places to start is the sternal or jugular notch of the manubrium of the sternum. This is usually clearly visible on most patients, being the first bony landmark we find centrally at the base of the anterior neck. It is a smooth, semicircular, concave depression at the base of the neck that articulates with the medial end of the clavicle. The sternoclavicular joint is easily palpated moving laterally in either direction and you should easily be able to follow the S shape of the clavicle laterally towards the acromioclavicular joint. You should feel a small dip between the lateral end of the clavicle and the acromion. The acromion has a broad surface which passes backwards for approximately 5 cm before turning sharply backwards to become the spine of the scapula. Once we have identified the acromion, we can find the subacromial space immediately beneath the lateral aspect of the acromion. Beneath the subacromial space, we come to the head of the humerus. By flexing the elbow and supporting the arm, we can rotate the humerus and identify the intertubercular groove which runs vertically between the greater tubercle on the lateral aspect and the lesser tubercle on the medial aspect. If we come approximately 3 cm inferior to the acromioclavicular joint and 3 cm medially, we should be able to find the coracoid process by palpating firmly. The spine of scapula is usually visible on most patients and runs to the medial border of the scapula, separating the supraspinous and infraspinous fossas, despite being deep to the trapezius muscles. We can follow the medial border of the scapula upwards towards the superior angle and down towards the inferior angle where it becomes the lateral border. By getting the patient to put their hand behind their back, the inferior angle becomes more prominent and it is easier to find the medial and lateral borders of the scapula.